I am Liffy Joy and welcome to another planty video and this is Rosie. She is apparently going to be very involved in today's video, which is the first in the Elements of Art series. So this is the series that I'm actually really excited about doing because as I keep on mentioning, I am an artist. So I wanted to fuse my love of art and my love of plants together. So this is the first in those videos, which is pretty cool. So the elements of art are basically like the building blocks that you use to create a piece. So you need to have a fundamental understanding of the elements of art before you can create something beautiful. And the first of the elements of art that we're going to be looking at, and it's going to take some time to get through, because reasons, also because I don't want to make 400 hour long videos, is color. So today is the first installment of color. And in particular, we're going to be looking at primary colors. So there are three primary colors. I normally do three like this, but I get mocked endlessly. So there are three primary colors. And the first one we're going to look at today is red. So basically a primary color is a color that cannot be mixed. There you go, nice and simple. So you have to buy the tube of paint basically. All other colors you can mix from other colors, but there are three primary colors that you cannot mix. And one of those is red. The other two are yellow and blue, and those are gonna be the next videos coming up. That's all I'm saying. Um, but today we're starting with red, which is pretty cool. I also wanted to wear something red, but I realized that the only red things that I own are a pair of trousers, and that's no use to anyone when I'm filming. So <laughs> I'll sorry about that. So I have gone ahead and researched red plants. I'm gonna have missed stuff, obviously. One, because I didn't feel like it necessarily fit into this category and would fit better into another category. There's a lot of elements and principles of art, so they may be somewhere else. Or, and this is the most likely option, I didn't notice it. So please forgive me if I'm missing something really obvious. I feel like I did thorough research, but we'll see. So what I've done is I've divided this up into three sections. So we're gonna look at indoor plants, outdoor plants, and flowering plants, because I feel like those are kind of three nice little sections. So here are the indoor plants. So I'm gonna start waffling and get to the first plants on the list. The number one plant on the list, you're gonna say, this is not red leaves, it has red in the leaves. It is the Maranta leuconuria, also known as red plant. So I cracked this guy out before, but he has red banding. So I feel like that counts. I've just cleaned his leaves off so he looks a bit weird, but I don't know if the hand's gonna help. But he has beautiful red banding. So these are kind of advertised as a lower light plant, but I feel like you can get away with having them in bright indirect light and they need good humidity. This guy's starting to look a bit better now that I've got humidifier. He's got quite a bit of new growth. But that would be my first suggestion for a red plant because of the red banding. I feel like it's really, really pretty. Oh, and the light keeps on changing, which is a fun game to be playing. What is happening? <laughs> so number one on the red plant list, Maranta leuconuria. Leuconuria. Okay, number two on the list is Peperomia caparata luna red. Um, these leaves are really cool. I used to have one to show you and then I thought, you know, it'll be a good idea. I'm gonna plant it outside and it's not been the happiest. So you're not gonna get B-roll of that guy. Instead, you're gonna get this image. But these have really cool sort of pinky red. I feel like they're not true red leaves, but they have an amazing texture on them, nice rounded shape, and they make really good house plants. So if you're in the market for something that stays compact and doesn't get enormous, then Peperomia is where it is at for you. The next one on the list is another Peperomia. I do have one to show you, but I don't really gonna have to see it very nicely. So I'll put a picture up as well. Okay, um, there you go. Let's get his opening for you. Peperomia Rosso. Now, again, I know the this does not have technically red leaves, but it does have red undersides. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see properly. This thing needs a real dust. My goodness, it is filthy. But the undersides of the Peperomia Rosso are beautiful. They're this deep red. And I think it's a lovely little pop of color. This is not the happiest in this terrarium, so maybe don't put them in a terrarium. They, they have an issue with overwatering or underwatering. They're sort of fussy when it comes to watering, but you can do Nick Paletti's taco test. So he needs a bit of water. I feel like I just watered him though, so. Hmm. Hmm. But those are really cool as well because of the corrugation on their leaves. So the contrast and the corrugation on those, I would say is beautiful. And that is why they made it onto the red list. Okay, I've got a little picture of the next one. I feel like I need to look at pictures to talk to you about these properly. So the next one on the list is an Aglianema Siam aurea. Aurea? Aurora. Aglianem, Aglianema Siam aurora. These are cool. I didn't think I liked Aglianema, but I 
I'm sort of warming to them actually. I think I like the more colorful ones. This is cool. So this is also known as the Chinese Evergreen and the Sea of Aurora has amazing sort of red flashes on the outside as seen in this image. Maybe another image. But they're really, really pretty and like they're pretty easy plants to care for. So if you're looking for something for a pop of color in your house and um, well, something low maintenance, then I would say an Aglianema is probably a good bet. And this Sea of is really, really cool. So yeah. Okay, the next one's on the list. It's a couple of begonia because let's be honest, begonia rex are colorful and I feel like they fall nicely onto this category. So the first one is begonia red kiss. This guy's cool. We actually have one of these in the garden. It's not quite as red as this, um, but we have one patch that begonias really seem to like that so they just all go in the beds, but you can also keep them as indoor plants. I've seen a lot of people have them as indoor plants. Um, they're pretty easy to care for. I mean, this guy's beautiful with his nice red sort of flashes in the middle and then black striped through the center, which looks really, really cool. Um, they do like a bit more humidity, however, I believe. So maybe keep that in mind. You don't have to pump it up to like 80, but I think it makes them happier. Then, ooh, we've got two more begonia. Begonia inca fire, which pure red for the red purist who doesn't want any contrast on their leaves. I think this thing is beautiful. And also can go outside, inside, very, very nice, but beautiful plant. So the last one is begonia ruby slipper. So that doesn't have the black edging. It does look pretty similar to the ruby kiss, but goodness me, there are a lot of begonia. So I've probably missed a lot of red ones. These were three that kind of kept on continually popping up. So I would imagine that means that universally they are easy to find. Um, I also didn't want to put too many like rare or unusual plants on this because like it's nice to look at them, but if you can't have them in your home then and they're hard to find them, sort of what is the point? So there's gonna, I, I feel like I've kind of kept it relatively accessible with the list, I think. So fingers crossed. Next on the indoor list is Fetonia Ruby Lime. Um, I think these are also called nerve plants, AKA the most dramatic plant in the world. So these have really, really cool red veining, I guess you would call it. Or is it green veining? No, I would say that's red veining. Um, also can be used outside. So I personally would use this outside as inside, but I've seen they're a super popular indoor plant because they're traditionally a ground cover, I believe. But if you don't water them, they will let you know. It's kind of like a piece of it. They need water, they're just gonna go, <sighs> give them water and they put it right back up. So a Fetonia ruby lime is the next one on the list. Okay, the last one on the indoor list is the Philodendron Rojo Congo. I love this plant. It's super cool. A Philodendron in general is amazing, but the Rojo Congo, it's called the Rojo Congo because when its new leaves unfurl, the new leaf is this beautiful rich red and then they fade down to sort of like a darkish burgundy green color. So it doesn't have that pop of red when it is a more mature leaf, but that new leaf is oh, it's delicious. So that's kind of why they're on the list. I'm just looking at the picture of the one here. It's really, really, really pretty. Um, they're also quite handy for indoor plants because they don't um, trail or vine like lots of other philodendrons. So they remain in that kind of rosette formation when they grow, so they can get big. I've seen some cracking ones, but you can still kind of control them in your house and are a relatively easy care plant as well. So if you just provide its needs, then it should be happy for you and look pretty majestic. Okay, now we move on to outside plants. The first on the outside plant list is a caladium. Let me look at the picture of this guy. Aha, caladium brandy wine. I picked this one because I have this one. He's only tiny, so there's a sort of better picture of a larger leaf over here. But these are really, really cool. And they're sold as indoor plants, but they do much better as outside plants because contrary to popular leaf, they need a lot of light. So bright light helps them thrive, but they are a bulb. So I know a lot of people buy them and then they go dormant and people think, oh my goodness, I've killed them. If you haven't killed them, they've just gone dormant. So don't despair. Guys, the light is all over the place. I don't really know what to do because um, we have terrible lights in here, so I'm having to rely on natural lighting. Oh, I'm sorry. So next on the list is Coleus Ruby Slipper. They're all called Ruby something. This, another outside guy, another one that we have in the garden. They're cool for shaded beds. Mostly, you can get away with some of them in some, but a shady bed is a nice idea. Also, they're super low maintenance, which is really, really cool. So they add pops of color to your shaded beds, which is kind of why I have a bed that's basically begonias and coleus, 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 to add some color into beds. And it looks really, really nice. So they have cool leaf formation, nice little textured edges. Yes, 10 out of 10 shaded bed plant, I would say. Okay, so this next one's cool. Next on the red list is a Cordline Australis Red Star. 
Love these guys. These are really, really nice dramatic plant to add to add some sort of structural elements to outside garden with their nice specky, specky leaves. These are also from New Zealand, which is nice. Lots of the plants that we look at are either from South America. Rosie tried to jump on the table and didn't make it. Come here, Rosie. She's sad and embarrassed. Hello. <laughs> so these are from New Zealand, which is awesome because most of the plants that we look at are from Brazil, South America. Succulents are mostly from here in South Africa. Um, yeah, so it's cool to have. Missy's trying to climb the wall. <laughs> Bless them. Um, I've got completely distracted from what I was saying. Anyway, so these make also really, really good container plants. So if you have, say, for example, a patio or like we have only tiny beds and then everything else has to go in pots, these are really, really good container or pot plants. So keep that in mind if you have a small space and need some drama. Quarter line. There's so many other colors as well, but I picked the red star obviously because this is red. Yay, now we move on to succulents. I'm trying to keep outdoor and succulents low on the list because I know that most people sort of are more inclined towards indoor plants, I feel, um, and my knowledge is better on indoor plants, but there are some succulents. Now this, Rosie broke off, this is Rosie's fault. Look how red he is. Look how shaky my hand is. <laughs> This is a Crashler Capitella Campfire. Capitella? Capitella. So I'm just looking at the image of a better plant here because this looks really sad. I am going to plant him up because bless succulents for easy propagation. So he's going to form a new plant in the bed. Rosie, this is your casualty. You did this. So these are from South Africa. Yay! Welcome to our South African succulent range. Um, they're in all of our provinces here, which is really, really cool, but they make a beautiful plant. They're sort of quite compact, so I believe the one that I'm showing you now is in a pot. Um, but our one is just planted in the ground and it's working as a beautiful ground cover. And when it's in the sun, it goes this beautiful, beautiful red. So we're in the middle of what can only be described as a heat wave, which is why I'm filming this at the crack of dawn in the morning before it gets hot. Because <laughs> otherwise, you would just see sweat coming down my face. But yeah, these are great. So the the intense sun makes them go red and also I believe when it gets really really cold it also forces them to go red basically when you're stressing the plant. So you'll see for lots of plants like succulents or even things like Discidia when they are sun stressed they go red. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the happiest I guess but it looks pretty and that is why Crescula Capitella Campfire is on the red list. Also, it's beautiful. If you can get your hands on one of these, they are stunning. So this is cool as well. So if you've watched my humidity video, if you haven't, please go back and watch. <laughs> but this is an example of a plant that uses a different kind of photosynthesis. So the Crassulia see an acidic metabolism type of photosynthesis rather than standard photosynthesis. So this is one of those guys. Science. Right, last one on the outside list is Kalanco or Kalan. Coe, I don't know how you say it. I would say Calanco, but I see people say Calancoe. Six angularis, which means six angled, don't have filthy minds. Beautiful plant as well. So we have some of these in the garden. They're filling out really nicely. They can get absolutely enormous. So I basically use them as like a, a structural plant at the back of one of our beds. Ours are really tiny at the moment. I shall show you a picture or a video. Sorry for the rest of the beds. I just life at the moment. So they look a mess, but whatever, it's fine. Um, these are another native plant to South Africa, well, Southern Africa, but they're also found, I believe, in Zimbabwe and Northern Namibia, so Southern Africa in general, but awesome plant. The fact that they get really, really tall is really nice, so if you're trying to add some structure and some red, Calanchoe sexangularis. Another thing about this guy, which is quite handy, is they can grow in shade. So you'll see, I don't know what the Calanchoe or Calanco, Calancho, whatever, is that you can buy um, the flowers that's really popular as a house plant, but that's a Calanco. So they are okay in shade, remarkably. So they're not gonna go this intense red color if you put them in shade. They're only, they will only do this if they're in full sun, but it is a beautiful red. So the last section is the flowering plant section. There's only a few on this list because I got you guys, don't worry, I know you're about the leaves most of the time. But the first one I really, really like, it's an Ashenanthus Mona Lisa. The leaves are really pretty as well, so it's a win-win, but Oh, they're so beautiful. I actually bought one of these, the one that I'm showing you now, to give to a friend. So hopefully I have given this to you, Rach, by the time this video comes out. If not, surprise, I got you a plant. <laughs> so these guys are really cool. They're from Asia, so obviously they like slightly more humid tropical conditions and bright and direct light that will help them to flower. Also, fun fact, if you feed them tomato food when the buds start to form, then you'll get a heck of a lot more flowers than if you didn't feed them, which is good to know. I guess this similar to tomatoes in that. 
but you're only going to get these beautiful red flowers if you have them in a good light condition. So if you're keeping them in sort of medium or even low light, like they're not going to die, but you're not going to get them flowering. The flowers are kind of the point of a lipstick plant, I guess, because they look really weird. But the Mona Lisa has really nice red flowers. A lot of other Ashnanthus have a red flower as well, but I just picked the Mona Lisa because I kind of like the shape of the leaves. Almost at the end, guys. So second last on the red list, the red flowering list, is the Amaryllis Red Lion purely for the fact that it is a giant red flower. That is what you're getting with this plant. They're actually really pretty. So like now I'm looking at the picture, I think they're actually really nice. I've never been into them before, but maybe I should give them a chance. I guess my problem is I don't like plants that go dormant because I, yeah, I think I'm just impatient. But this is another guy that goes dormant like your caladiums. But it's really pretty. And I mean, I know most people just buy them and chuck them out, which is a bit sad because you can actually maintain them. If you want to look after them after the flower has died down, you just chop off the stem, repot it, and then you can kind of maintain it for the year and it'll flower again because that's what a bulb does. Um, I guess you could also take it out and store the bulb in a dark place, which is what I've done with other bulbs like hyacinth, and then they flower again the next year. So really, really pretty. So if you're looking for a giant red flower for your home, Amaryllis Red Lion. And the last on the list, the last of the red plants, is Euphorbia pulchimeria. Pulchimeria? I think. Also known as poinsettia. Who knew? I genuinely thought the name was poinsettia. You learn something new every day, I guess. Um, the quintessential chuck away plant. I feel really bad for poinsettias, that's why I put them at the end, because, I, yeah, I don't know. They, I feel like they're quite underrated. They're really beautiful. So the red is the Bracts. Hello. But again, most people get them for Christmas because they're available at Christmas because of when they sort of start to flower, just seasonally, that's how it works. And then they chuck them away. You don't have to chuck them away, guys. You can keep them. They're a plant. You can, you can keep them. They're just not going to be red. There's a whole long history behind poinsettia, but I'm not going to go into that because this is not a poinsettia video. But I felt like they needed to be included on the red list because they're actually really, really cool. Aren't they, Rosie? Yes, they are. <laughs> So that's it guys for the red plant list. Um, I hope that was helpful if you happen to have been looking for a red plant. Uh, later down the road I'm going to talk to you about styling of red plants, things like that, but for now that is my very concise red plant list. Obviously there are a lot more, but these just kind of felt like potentially useful red plants to know. So yeah, that's it from me guys. I will see you next time for another planty video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully you want to tune in for more of the Elements of Art series. I'm very excited. There's some really cool plants on the list. I'm trying not to double up with any of them. So every episode should have completely different plants, which is pretty exciting. So we're going to keep on with primary colors, secondary colors, then tints, tones, textures, all of that jazz. So there's going to be some really interesting plants. So I'm excited to see you on the journey with me. If you want to make your life easier and not have to look for me, please, can you hit the subscribe button? That would be amazing. Um, if you do, thank you. If you already subscribe, thank you even more. And uh, Rosie, Misty, who is under the table, and I will see you again for another planty video. Uh, you can keep up to date with us on Instagram at leafy.greenfingers if you fancy, but if not, see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, guys.